You're welcome back to Hello Nigeria, and it's time for a top story. Today's Thursday, and on Thursdays on Hello Nigeria, we dedicate it to human angle stories. We have a young man in the studio. His name is Iwi Edwin Iguodala. On the 18th of November, or the 18th of December 2015, his life changed. Uh, literally, his life changed. He's here to tell us and share the story of his life, a remarkable story of survival. And I'm sure we have a lot to learn from it as individuals. And of course, uh, it also highlights a lot of problems in Nigeria, with particularly in the healthcare uh, sector. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Edwin Hi. to Hello Nigeria. Edwin. Hi, Edwin. Which of the names do we call him? Edwin. Um, Edwin is fine. Iwi. <coughs> a lot of people know me. In-house people know me as Iwi. That's Iwi. a short form of my mm. native name. What's your full um, native name? Iwi Isi. Iwi Isi. Yeah. Iwi Isi. Iwi Isi. It sounds very what Japanese. What does it mean? Um, Life is easy. In Benin, it means, literally, it means I won't get missing abroad. So it's usually given to kids who are born outside of the kingdom. So, and that's oh. spelled I-G-H-I-S. I-W-I-Y-I-S-I. Oh, okay, because yes. the one I know is I-G-H. Maybe it's It's I-G-H-I-Y-I-S-I. Wow, e I didn't realize why you were saying it. It's a one-for-one class. Amazing, mm. fantastic. <laughs> great to have you on the show. Yes. All right, From the we... great Benin kingdom. Ah, yeah, proudly I like that. You're proud. Mm. Yes. My we mom are... is from Edo State, but not from Benin, Benin. Kingdom. My mom is from Togo. I'm half caste. No, you're wow. confused. You're like, <laughs> <"Yeah>, you're <not> <laughs> there. Anyways, let's go straight into our discussion today. Mm. I, I mean, you're such a vibrant, um, charismatic human being. You walk into a room and you literally, we can feel light your energy, you light up the place. Mm. And um, it wasn't probably like this a few years um, ago because you went through something that for a lot of people, to them, I have seen the end of their dreams or feeling a bit less than themselves, but you didn't allow that to affect you. So could you tell us a bit, you know, when did this happen, what happened? Okay, students um, of history will be watching, and I mentioned the 18th of December. <laughs> students of history want to know what, what happened, happened on the 18th, on the 18th of, of December, December 2015. Mm. Okay, um, on the 18th of December, a very close family friend, he's, he's more like a brother to me, he's in-house person. Um, he had his traditional wedding in Wari, and the whole family were all in Benin to support this friend, this brother, mm. apart from my mom and my dad. So I drove down from Benin to Wari for the traditional rites and the traditional wedding. So on our way back from Wari, at about 5.30, 6 in the evening, I was in the car with nine other people. It was a Sienna bus. So it was I, my elder brother, who just came in with my younger sister from Abuja mm. on the same day. We were driving back. The only person I was in the car with us was my younger brother. And he was in Benin, but for some reason that morning, when I walked into his room, he was like, I'm not going to worry, for mm. reasons best known to him. And on our way back to Benin, along Benin Sapel Expressway, I was trying to overtake this truck, this lengthy, very lengthy truck. Then the driver swerves. No trafficator, nothing. He just swerves to my side. So I had two options. Either I ram into this trailer and, I don't know, kill everybody in the vehicle, or I get off the road. So I took the second option. So I moved off the road. And in getting off the road, the car flipped. And in wow. flipping, I lost my left arm it's my left arm got crushed in the process and how many of you were in the vehicle we were no that's we the were picture of the vehicle oh, wow. that's a picture of the vehicle did it, burn, did it was it burnt that was my side it wasn't burnt mm. it was just my side i just my side of the vehicle happened to suffer the most damage felt the most impact exactly. yeah. felt the most impact and i came out myself i was very nobody helped me out i took out my seat belt i came out my elder brother was on the passenger side so he came out first he was trying to get everybody out of the vehicle he didn't notice that my hand had been badly damaged so i came out i sat down beside the car i was looking at everybody trying to rush out the vehicle did you know then that your hand had been damaged i knew i mean i came out i came out holding my arm so i knew it had been badly damaged but i didn't know to what, what extent, extent it mm. had been badly damaged so my elder brother tried to get everybody out of the vehicle when he was done with that, he turned back and saw me, and he ran mad. Literally. <laughs> Literally, he was mad for a couple of minutes. I, I would say an estimated five minutes, my other brother. By mad, was he upset? Or he, he was, was screaming, God, why, Jesus, Evie, look at your hand. I should have been driving that vehicle. You know, because he was my elder brother, so he had a sense of responsibility. And, and protection. Do you yeah. understand? So... He took off his belt, tried to strap up my upper arm to stop blood loss. He ran to the road trying to get every vehicle 
He, he didn't bother if it was the express. He was in the middle trying to wave everybody down. Just stop, stop, come. I need help from anywhere. Mm. Then this young man, I think it was a transporter. I had this Mitsubishi space wagon. He stops. Then my brother says, it's an emergency. We need to get him to the nearest hospital. And he goes, I beg, I don't want me blood stay my motto. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was his first reaction. Then he had this elderly couple in the, mm. in the vehicle who pleaded with him to say, okay, it's a matter of life and death, help him out. And so he said, all right, cool, where are you going to exactly? We're like, we're not familiar with Benin. We only came in for a wedding. Just take us to the closest medical facility and that'll be fine. So luckily for us, the young man actually understood the, the whole geography of Benin. So mm. he was able to get us around big traffic and all that. So the first medical facility we got to was Stella Bassinger, um Hospital in GRA in Benin. And the moment we came in, the nurse at the reception was like, you know, get what you want to do for you. This is not bone injury. Carry on, go central or UBTH. Wow. That was our reaction. So there was nothing like, um, let's try and first aid. administer first, first aid. aid or, yeah. No, there was nothing like that. And she just told us off. So at this point, I had, spoke, I had spoken with my parents while we were in the vehicle mm. driving. I tried to speak with them. I was as calm as I could be. I didn't want to put them under any, any oh, unnecessary yeah. pressure. I had spoken with my dad just before we left Worry okay. at about five. And he was like, leave now. Leave Worry now. I don't want you people to leave to drive at night because yeah. he understood that we weren't familiar well, with the road. this was in the evening. Yeah. It was in the evening at about 5.30, 6 p.m. So we were just about an hour from Benin when it happened. So when we called again and I was like, oh, we've been involved in an accident, it's bad. He was badly injured. But... So he spoke with me and I'm like, yeah, I'm injured, but it's not as bad as you think. It's all right. It's fine. Don't bother. Mm -hmm. We're going to the hospital. When we get there, they'll sort it out. I'm injured on my left arm, but it's not as bad as you think. Don't, don't get all worked up. Mm -hmm. But I knew later that my mom did not sleep. <laughs> but I didn't know at that point of in time. Those mothers. They were actually supposed to be in Benin for the wedding. But my dad had a, another function to attend in, in Lagos. His senior colleague at the time had his daughter's wedding in Lagos. So it was like we just divided oh, okay. the family. Children yeah. go for so the after, yeah. after the Stella Obasanjo Hospital, we went, to, we went to General Hospital in Benin, which is Central Hospital. Okay. And while we got there, I think I, I kind of lost sense of, um, I kind of lost consciousness at that point. I because really you were, just to ask um, a question, while all this was going on, you were losing blood yeah, on your arm. Yeah, I was losing blood. My elder brother, has taken, he had taken off his shirt. He had tried to wrap up the arm just to stop or reduce the yeah. loss of blood. He was soaked in blood. He's up to his boxers. He was, he, was, he was drenched in my blood. So we got to Central Hospital. At that point, I, I really didn't know what happened. But I, I can remember they put me on an ambulance. They didn't do anything to they didn't mm. administer first aid or anything. They put me on an ambulance and took me to University of Benin Teaching Hospital. UBTH. UBTH. Yeah. So it was when we got there, apparently my mom had called, my parents had called everybody they knew in Benin, all their brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts and to tell them. So I, I got to the hospital and it was packed. It was like a family <laughs> reunion. I'm seeing mm. all my uncles and aunts and everybody. Do you understand? And they were all gathered there trying to get in touch with one doctor or the other doctor or... Do you understand? And when we got accident to, when we got to accident and uh, emergency, oh. this was about 11.30 p.m. So accident happened at 5.30. You yeah, didn't have any about, medical no, attention. Nothing, to, nothing. I mean, it's a you're miracle that you're, long? That no, you're sitting here five and talking hours. to us I, today. I didn't, I didn't get medical attention till about 11.30 p.m., 12. I mean, when we walked in through accident and emergency, the nurse, the nurse was like, my elder brother was screaming, it's an emergency, it's a matter of life and death. And the nurse goes... Everybody for here in our life and death, in our emergency. We don't get bed where we won't put out. This is the reason well, why a lot of... University of Benin Teaching Hospital. But one way or the other, I was able to get a bed. They threw me on the bed. They were able to get a doctor to come attend to me, clean me up. They had to buy blood because they had to administer blood, blood transfusion at that point. The blood bank in UBTH was on strike. Whoa. So they couldn't buy blood. I had to... They had to the ambulance had to go back to... Central Hospital to buy three pints of blood and brought it back. At this point, I was conscious again. I knew everything that was happening. So, and the doctor was trying to talk me through the whole event. So he kept going, okay, what happened? Tell me. So he was trying to just keep me conscious. Yeah. But I was conscious anyways. I, I don't know, probably what that's What was practice. going on through you? What was going on in your mind yeah. at the time? Did you ever envisage your fear that you were going to when, lose when your you life? Was no, lo losing my life was not in the question. That, that, was, that wasn't... That wasn't, that was, thinking that was, about I wasn't thinking about losing then what, my wait, life. what was going on in then your mind? I, I, I tried to keep my eyes open. There was this movie I saw a long time ago. I think it was Tom Cruise, Armageddon. It was some line he used that those who survive are those who keep their eyes open. Mm. 
So that that just kept playing back at the back of my mind somewhere like just keep mm. your eyes open. Just try try to keep your eyes open. You you get through this. Then you then your that. arm when you got out and uh... when I got out, the the first doctor that saw me, he he cleaned it out. I mean, washed off all the sand and everything. When I got to the hospital, I still had control sensation. of a sensation yeah. in my fingers, so I could still move my fingers. So there was a slight possibility that they could have saved the arm. Yes, they, there heard. was a slight possibility, but. When the, the, the other, because it was a team of doctors that, mm. that attended to me, fantastic young guys, some of them young, but the head of the team was um, Dr. O Professor Ogbemudia was the head of the team. Uh. Professor Ogbemudia was the head of the team, but he had a, a set of young, well, about four or five young doctors on the team. And one of them, Dr. Wadia, who was the one who saw me on Saturday morning, was the one who said, your arm has been badly injured, you've lost tissue, veins, and the, the blood supply from your upper arm to your lower arm has been destroyed. But you have a very slight, thin, very thin chance that you might save the arm. Save the arm. When he said that, I was like, okay, cool. So my what dad, was going on in your head all this while? I knew the arm was badly hurt. But did you ever, in your wildest dreams, think you would lose an arm? Yeah. I mean, you were just at, at fresh the point, at, from yeah, I just your came masters, back from my masters then. and overseas. No, at, at, at the point when the doctor told me um, you, you were badly injured, and this is, I, I already took it in. Like, what's the worst that could happen? I'll lose my arm. I mean, at least you were alive. And yeah, you know, exactly. after um, losing exactly. blood for about five hours. Mm. And unfortunately, I couldn't even be taken out of Benin at the time because the roads were bad. Flights were not coming in and out of Benin because so the there was an option visibility, to, visibility was poor. There was an I mean, option we had to an fly option you. to fly me out, but planes were not coming in and out of Benin. And okay, so at the point when that doctor had told you that um, you had lost a lot of blood and that there, tissue, there was a slight um, chance that they could save you. Um, no, at that save point. Save your arm, rather. At that point, yeah, there was, there was a very... But it was 0, 0.0 something percent. It was almost... The arm was almost gone at that point. So I wasn't, I wasn't too hopeful, but... You know, then religion comes to play and everybody's saying their prayers. I, I jest with my cousins. I say, the Bible says if your faith is as tiny as a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain move and it will move. And I tell my cousins, so all of you put together, your faith is not as big as mustard seed. Because if you could not pray for my arm, but it's just, it's just, it's just, yeah. 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 So what was the major factor? I mean, we're talking to you today, less than a year after yes. that incident happened. And you seem to be in high spirits. And uh, I do know that your family was, like you've shared with us, your family was supportive. But what, are the, what, what, what was it about growing up and your experience that made you handle uh, that kind of situation um, uh, with optimism and yes. saying, look, Apart I still have my life. And, obviously. And, and it's yeah. just amazing how the little <laughs> things we watch, the things <laughs> that we... How they pay back, how they pay back when, in, need them. when we need yeah. them. Um, at that point, I think the greatest motivator was the fact that nobody lost their life or nobody was badly injured mm. in the accident. So that was, at that point, that was the greatest motivation. I wouldn't have forgi forgiven myself if anything mm. had happened to anyone. And there were all your family members in the vehicle? No, the my, younger, my younger sister and my elder brother and six other people that, mm. friends and random people. I mean, you came for a ceremony. We're going yeah. back to Benin. Yeah. It's an empty van. Okay, that's a, that's a picture with uh, the prospectus. And uh, that was That you. was in um, Notre Dame in Paris, Ca the mm. cathedral in Notre Dame, just before I came back. Okay. okay. Went oh, so basically, you mentioned the fact that nobody lost their life. That was a major yeah, motivation. Yeah, that was a major motivation. What but else? prior to that, I would say my... The greatest, the greatest thing that happened to me growing up was going through Nigerian Navy Secondary School, Abel Kuta. NNS Abel Kuta. Yes, that was the greatest thing. I think that gave me still, it gave me the, the ability to, the sense of responsibility. I mean, going through a military facility, you're given some key, you, you, you tend to imbibe some skills that you, at that point, you don't know you're, you're, you're taking them in. Things to like responsibility, sense of um, strength, mental strength. You're growing up with mental, I mean like 12, 13, you're growing up with mental strength to, to overcome discipline. whatever your discipline. The discipline is astronomical. You can't compare it to any form of dif discipline anywhere in the world. So at that point in time, when the, the doctor told me you, you, you're going to have your arm amputated, it was just, I mean, that's life. It's, How did your family take it? Oh, my mom was distraught. I mean, there was talks my about, was um, and then your journey through rehabilitation and uh, the prosthesis and, and all uh, of that. My mom was distraught. My mom, I, I don't think she's been able to get out of it. But because mm. 
of m me being who I am. Your personality. Right? Exactly, my personality. I told them from the get-go, I don't want a situation where this changes anything. I'm still iwi. Treat me like iwi. Don't beat yourself over it. There was nothing you could have done that would have changed the situation. <clears throat> so there was no need for you to start with the whole should halves or could halves or would halves. It, it doesn't change anything. Right now is the way forward. How do we get functional processes? How do, how do we make sure it doesn't affect quality of life? Luckily for me, we're at the time and age in life where physical abilities count for little or nothing. Yeah. Do you understand? That's it's good. more or less your mental ability these mm -hmm. days. And I'm fortunate to have one of the best forms of education in the world. So I, f I think personally, I'm sound enough to take, off any, take up any responsibility thrown at me. So that just gave me that sense of, well, it's life. I mean, it's one arm. There's still the other arm. You can still live life. I mean, there are people who are paralyzed neck down and do paintings and live. So I mean, I you drive. I still you drive. Have a beautiful, exactly. I was going to ask. I, I, you. I had the pleasure of meeting your beautiful girlfriend last week. And what um, is has anything <laughs> changed between then and now drastically? Abs mm. Absolutely nothing. Were you dating at the time? When yes, we were. Okay. Yes, we were. She came down to Benin after the, the the accident. She was with me in Benin. And she's she's been fantastic. She's been supportive. I Is she a, the one that um, wrote the signings on your? Arm? Yeah, one of them. One okay, of them. he has. Sure like your mom it. has one on them as well. No, she, she has doesn't. a lot of signings she, on. She his doesn't. Not arm. yet, but she would. She would. Mm. Okay. It's it's, a, it's. I mean, anyone could could put put something on. It's just. That's great. Now, just, do you look? Do you see? Because sometimes life throws us th throws us things that we didn't plan for, we didn't expect. But sometimes it depends on who you are to determine if you allow it to defeat you or you allow it to inspire you to, to, to do others. Do you think that despite the fact that you went through this unfortunate incident, that, for instance, today you're probably inspiring a lot of people who are watching who think that, oh, life is finished, I cannot go on. Do you think that this has put you in that position to be able to speak to people, young people, older people, to inspire them? Certainly, certainly. I mean, a lot of people can draw energy from the way I responded to, mm. to the whole incident, to the whole experience. I mean... A lot of people would go through stuff that are probably not even as devastating as this, and it would take them probably months or years to, to recover from yeah. it. Right. I recovered almost immediately. I mean, there, there's, a, there's, remember, a picture, there's a picture yeah. I sent two days after surgery. I was full of high spirits. I'm taking pictures and peace out like I'm Tupac or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember talking to him, but because we both come from a military background, I knew that, I mean... He's fine, he's fine. That's amazing. Edwin, your story has been very inspiring. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for We're hoping me. that if you've heard his story, it will inspire you to know that it's not the end of the road, no matter mm. what it is that you're going through. He conquered his, you can do yours too, okay? Yes. What do we have today in history, Aya? All right, today in history, apart from the fact that we have the phenomenal Edwin with us in the studio, is that some people are celebrating their birthdays. If it's your birthday today, a big, big happy birthday. We cannot go without mentioning our very own Joke Silva. Joke Silva was born today in history. Also, Olisa Adigwa. Oh, I wow, didn't know that was a Silva. lovely Joke Silva. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm getting to that. I know, I'm getting to that. But I just had to mention our mm. own people. Olisa Adigwa was also born today in history. Ian McShane was born today in history. He is an actor. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? All right, t then also, on this day in history, um, the youngest... Well, okay, maybe perhaps perhaps it wasn't... Okay, mm -hmm. the youngest Guantanamo Bay prisoner was released. He was... Um, his name is Omar Kader. Who he did was he the is? youngest prisoner. Wow. wow. All right, and, that's um, all we have for you yeah. today on the show. Thank you so much. Happy birthday, shout out. To yes, um, for those that would want to ask... Yes, I was Even going to ask him questions. that. Um, some people might want to follow you on social media. How can mm. they follow you? Yes, um, on Facebook, I'm Iwi Eddie Godala. On Twitter, I'm at Tusik. That's T O O S I Q. I know a lot of people wonder where I got that from. He's I, a rapper. I, I, I used to do hip hop when I was much younger. He's a local okay. rapper. All okay. right. <laughs> so <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> at Tusik. At Tusik. T O O S I Q. Okay. That's my Twitter handle. So follow him. Are you on Instagram with the same handle as no, well? No, I'm not on Instagram. You're not on Instagram. So I'm follow him on Twitter at Tusik. And then you can follow him on Facebook at Iwi Edwin Igodala. 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 Follow Ayo at Ayo Thompson. Follow Benga at Black Voltaire. And follow me at Please Olive Emily. Follow, follow us. <laughs> I will make you features of me. We'll see you again tomorrow. It's Entertainment Friday. And we promise you a very inspiring celebrity. Until then, bye bye. Hasta la vista. Can I? Oh, I'm not saying that part. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why did I walk with people like this?
To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.